I, I'm obsessed. I think we need to, we need to solve our energy problems here in the near term, so that we can what, get what's out there. Your, um, what do you think could do that? Uh, there's certainly a lot of solar energy. There's a lot of wind energy. You could do it for a while on nuclear power, um, but nuclear is the 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 materials that you would use. Uh, there's only a limited amount, so it'll probably last a thousand years, but probably not a lot further. Uh, fusion will give us a, l a little bit more than that, but uh, but at the moment, I think you know, fusion is still unproven. So we're going to be stuck with solar and uh, and and the the subsidiaries of solar like wind and and uh, biofuels. I, I once went to a, a, a talk by an economist called um, I think it's called Jeremy Rifkind, and he was talking about hydrogen fuel cells. I consciously don't go to talks with with economists. Yeah. Well. I, I, <laughs> I went to this talk for whatever reasons. And it, yeah, I'm sorry, it was sorry, very but, yeah. fascinating to me because he was talking about um, uh, energy revolutions following or happening at the same time as communications revolutions. Right. And so he was talking about you know the the internet as being this uh, communication revolution of you know decentralized network communication and cell phones too. And um, waiting for the the energy revolution that would go with it, and he was talking about um, hydrogen fuel cells in the context of they would be a decentralized form of energy. They're yeah. Act, they're, yeah so they're, yeah. he's but got to be careful. This is why I don't go to talks with yeah. economists. It's a battery, not a energy source. Like you have to produce the hydrogen some other way. Yeah, no, he did. He did sort Thankfully, of say exactly. that was the snag <laughs> that you know hydrogen doesn't grow on trees, sort of thing. That you have to you know have to crack the hydrogen out of something else. But <clears throat> I mean, he, he it was a persuasive and interesting idea, and you know he gave lots of examples that made it sound like something would, one would like to see. But then I've always been surprised that never really heard much about it since then. Yeah, it's definitely the holy grail, is the distributed energy source. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, in my life, I actually looked at this in detail, and if I covered my whole, every piece of land that I own in my life, and it was producing hydrogen perfectly, it still wouldn't cover the amount of energy that I use. So I'm a little worried that that's a sort of my mission at the moment is what what is the limits what is a reasonable amount of energy for each person on the planet and in the context of carbon and these other things how do you how do you live the highest quality of life at, at per unit of energy so it actually makes the energy climate change conversation sort of an aesthetic one how do, you know it's, it's like how do we get the most out of what we know is finite 